Okay, great. Here we go. All right, so it's my honor to introduce our first session, Engaging Every Student, Herodeck Interactive Slide Presentations, presented by Mary Camella from the University at Buffalo. Mary, take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Jocelyn. Um, so today to learn about Pear Deck in our interactive session, we're actually going to be joining a live Pear Deck presentation so that you can see what it looks like on a student end as well as on the instructor end. So right now you should see that I'm sharing a screen with the joining information. So the easiest way to join is to go to the site, joinpd.com, and then type in our class code, which is I-I-L-N-R-O. <laughs> Pear Deck always comes up with a beautiful... Uh, acronym for us, which is always fun. Uh, another way that you can have students join a Pear Deck is to actually copy a link. So I'll also copy that link and drop it into the chat. And I'll just give everybody a minute or two to join. A nice thing about Pear Deck as well is you can join mid-presentation. So once the presentation starts, that join code will always be at the top corner of the presentation screen. So if you get kicked out, you accidentally close the tab like I did yesterday practicing this presentation, there's always a way to hop back in and you'll be put back right at where we're at in the presentation, which is nice. So I see our class number increasing. So again, just give a couple couple more seconds, half a minute, and then we will go ahead and get started. <clears throat> make sure I have that link copied because I'll drop it in, you know, after a few slides, just in case anybody joins late and they want to be in the Pear Deck with us. Um, but otherwise, I am going to go ahead and get started. So to start my class, I'll just click on start class. <clears throat> Again, because I want to show the instructor side as well as the student side, I'm sharing my screen. Um, but if you're doing this with students, you don't actually have to share your screen because as you'll notice in the window where you joined the Pear Deck, you can see all of the slides. There. So that's a nice feature. So there is going to be a little bit of going back and forth between the Pear Deck presentation and the Zoom window to see what I'm seeing on my end. So I appreciate and advance your flexibility in moving back and forth in that way. I'll try to be very uh, direct about when we're looking at what. And if I ever am looking at something I didn't mention where you should be and you have a question, feel free to unmute and just let me know and I will try to get everything back on track. Um, but to get started, my name's Mary. I'm really happy to be working with you today and kicking off the Silk Construction Showcase. We're going to be talking about Pear Deck, which is an interactive add-on for Google Slides and PowerPoint presentations that enhances them and makes them interactive. Um, so as a teaching librarian who's worked in both school and academic libraries, I find interactive tools like Pear Deck to be a great way to engage students, especially in those one-shot library instruction sections. To give you an idea of how we're going to spend the next 25 minutes, here's a schedule. We'll start with an introduction of Pear Deck. That's going to show all of the different slide types that you can integrate using Pear Deck, um, both the instructor and the student side. From there, I'm going to show some real world examples that I've used in my own information literacy teaching. After that, I'm going to do a brief demo showing you how you use Pear Deck in both Google Slides and PowerPoint. And finally, we'll wrap up with a, dis a discussion and Q&A. So to give a quick introduction about myself, I'm currently a student support and engagement librarian at the University at Buffalo. Uh, while I was looking for an image for this slide, you know, I'm scrolling past all of the beautiful UB in the springtime, UB in the fall foliage. However, I feel this very snowy UB logo is probably the most accurate representation of the winter that we're having so far. Um, I've been at UB for almost a year now. I started my career as a school librarian. I worked for two years in an elementary school in the city of Buffalo and then for three years in high schools in the suburbs of Buffalo. It was in these jobs, especially in the high schools that I worked, which were very large, and I was actually traveling between three different buildings. Um, that's when I really started looking to educational technology to make my lessons more engaging, especially in one-shot instruction sections, in times when I didn't necessarily have a personal relationship with students to know who I can call on, names of students, stuff like that. Um, so I actually started using Pear Deck to teach civic online reasoning, which is an information literacy curriculum from Stanford. And I actually started using it during the pandemic, which was really helpful. The district I worked in had, once we came back to school, students in person, as well as students online at the same time. And Pear Deck was a really helpful tool in navigating that high flex format of teaching. So when I started my current position at UB, which also focuses on information literacy instruction, I continued to use Pear Deck and other tech tools to enhance my teaching. 
<clears throat> so what I like about Pear Deck is that it functions as an add-on for Google Slides and PowerPoint. This means that you can create slide decks in the way that you normally would with platforms you're already familiar with, but then you just add on the interactive questions using Pear Deck. I've used some other slide deck tools that require you to create slides in their platform or upload your slides into their platform, which can be time consuming. It can have formatting issues. So I really like that Pear Deck just lets everything happen right on Google Slides or PowerPoint. So in this introductory section, we're gonna see all of the different response types that you can add to your slides with Pear Deck. So I'm going to be asking you to respond on the Pear Deck presentation that you joined, but from time to time, I might invite you to come back to the Zoom window to see what is happening on the instructor end. Um, I appreciate your flexibility in moving back and forth between the screens. So these are all the different slide types that we're going to see, except drawing. I actually didn't include a drawing slide, so sorry for the artists out there. Um, and I thought this would be a great way, especially since this is the first session, to get to know who is here in the showcase today. So the questions that you'll be answering are just about you, your work, your information literacy teaching. So this is a text response slide. So if you're looking at the Pear Deck presentation, you should uh, see the slide with the question, what is your current role? And then you should see a text response box. Uh, so please go ahead and try it out. I see that 20 of 43 people are already responding. I will take this moment just to drop that join link in the chat again for anybody who is coming in late. You should be able to either click on that link or you can go to joinpd.com and type in our code, which is right here in the top right hand corner. Okay, so if you've finished typing and you want to pop over to the Zoom screen again, I just want you to see the options that I have as the instructor. So while students are typing, I can see how many students are in the process of responding. So 45 out of 53. Um, you will notice there's no submit button on Pear Deck. Once you start typing, the instructor can see what's going on. They can see you typing in progress. I've used other things where students have to click submit for you to see it. Um, I can display the responses, which will show up on my screen as well as students' screens. It can also lock responses. So if I want students to stop, something I notice sometimes is if I pull up responses and I highlight a great response, I see some people deleting their response and typing a different response. So locking can be nice. You can even in the moment add new prompts to new questions, follow-ups, that sort of thing, which is nice to have the option to do live. But so I'm going to go ahead and click on show responses. So I can see this on my screen, but I believe you should be able to see this on your screen as well. And I can just browse through and see what everybody's doing. So it looks like we have a ton of different areas, but hopefully everybody is you know, involved in instruction in some way. But I've even used Pear Deck for PD. It's really great, especially to have these introductory questions or to get a big picture of who's there with you in the session. Awesome. And then I can go back to hide the responses, go back to the question. You know, sometimes you might see that you need to clarify and have students resubmit an answer. Totally easy to do. All right. So moving on to our next Pear Deck slide response type. This is a number response. And to be fully transparent, I don't use this one very often. I feel like it would probably be super helpful for math courses or other courses where students are using a lot of numbers. But I did just want to show you that it exists. It's here. You might consider using it in information literacy. You know, maybe you have students run a search, type the number of results they get, add some limiters, type the number of search, uh, results they get, counting the number of references in a scholarly source, something like that to just mix it up. Um, but again, I can pull up, and this is kind of fun because we get the timelines. So you can see them all overlaid and we can see in real time as people add answers, they're popping up. We can also see them individually. Oh, so we're really running the gamut here with anything from one to 50. Looks like our biggest. So yeah, big, a big variety in how much we're all teaching. All right. Hopefully this is working. I had a little bit of a tech issue with this yesterday, which we will talk about later and I give you some pros and cons of Pear Deck. But one of my favorite features of Pear Deck when it does work is you can embed a website so that students can view your content on a slide and the website in the same window. Um, so I'm sure we're all familiar with the fact that when we ask students to leave a presentation to find something on the internet, uh, sometimes we totally lose their attention and focus. So this way you can view class content and something on a web side by side without, you know, letting them go off on their own. Um, we'll see, see a real life example of how I used this type of slide in an information literacy class later. So nothing, nothing for you to do there except uh, view that blog review of Pear Deck. 
So moving right along, we have a multiple choice question. So I have my question here. What's your main concern when it comes to teaching information literacy concepts? And students can just select an option. I like to use the multiple choice slides for obviously a check for understanding, but also for informal polling like this, where I can get an idea of where everybody's at, how people are feeling. You know, I might start a class with saying, how are you feeling about your research paper? With sort of a Likert scale of responses. So it can have multiple uses there. And again, when I pull up the responses, um, you know, I can see in the real time as people add their answers. I can also see them individually or as an aggregated list. Something else to notice, so whenever I'm pulling up responses, they are anonymous. So I find that to be really helpful to tell students, especially if I notice that it might be a more reluctant group that you know, participation is required. I might pull up some answers, but it doesn't reveal whose answer is whose. You know, you always hope that if you do bring up, you know, a research topic and work with it, that that student will eventually reveal themselves. Um, but I do find it helps with buy-in and students being a little bit more honest and open in their responses, knowing that it's not going to say, well, Mary said this. So that's another feature of it that I do like, again, especially in these sessions where we don't necessarily have a personal relationship with students to know who our point person to call on for an answer is going to be. So just another note there. Okay, and so up until now, every question type that we've used has been a part of Pear Deck's free interface. So as long as you have a Google or a Microsoft account, you can sign up for a free account with Pear Deck. Um, there's only two slide types that fall under their premium plan. Um, this one, which is called draggable, and so you should be able to see you have a little star, and you can drag your star somewhere on the continuum of how comfortable you feel with integrating educational technology into your lessons. Um, Pear Deck is pretty good about giving and renewing free trials. So when I was working in a K-12 district, we did have the premium plan purchased by the district, but since I've been at UB, I have not had access to premium except through getting a free trial. I went to the ISTE conference this summer. They gave me another free trial. I emailed them and told them that I was doing this presentation session and they sent me a free trial as well as a code for a free trial that I'm going to give to everybody at the end. So they really do, you know, give a lot of free trials, but you might be at a time creating a presentation where you don't have premium. And I find that that's not a huge problem because again, it is just the drawing and the dragging. So there are workarounds to that. So the first thing is a nice feature I have found out on my own is that if I create a presentation while I have access to premium using a drawing or dragging slide, even if I lose my premium trial, those slides remain. So I can't create a new one, but I can still use this presentation that has a draggable slide. You can also think about, well, the question that I was going to ask with a draggable slide, could I facilitate asking that question with a different slide type? So for this, I could, again, use the multiple choice and turn this into a Likert scale and use it as a poll that way. So I found that there's definitely workarounds that I don't need the premium access, although it is nice. Um, so to show you how the draggable responses look, so for this, I'm going to lock the screens just so we can see how that looks, because the dragging and the drawing is definitely one where I feel like students, if you give them too much time on the slide, they just start drawing and dragging all over the place. Uh, but good, so it looks like for the most part, we're towards the end of feeling comfortable or very comfortable about integrating educational technology into our lessons. And for those who are towards the not as comfortable end of the spectrum, I hope that after today's presentation, you feel a little bit better about potentially using some interactive slide deck technology like Pear Deck in your lessons. So great. Thank you, everybody, for participating in those. It was great to get to know where everybody is coming from, and hopefully you enjoyed seeing those different slide types um, in action. So you may be wondering how I've actually used Pear Deck in information literacy instruction. So I have pulled some examples from classes I taught this past fall semester. So in my current position at UB, I mainly teach uh, first year first year students in their first year composition classes. So my team teaches one credit research lab for first year international students. And we also do four guest lectures in English 105, which is UB's standard first year composition course. Um, so the examples that I'm going to show today are all from my one credit research lab for international students. I find Pear Deck to be a really helpful tool uh, with non-native English speakers just because it 
helps me get a response from everybody, especially students who might be more reluctant to talk, especially at the beginning of the semester. It allows me to see where students are at. I can view the data. We'll talk about this in a little bit. I can view the data after the lessons and see if anybody not with me that I need to check in with. Um, but so this is from a lesson that we did about scholarly versus popular sources. A lot of what we focus on in this research lab is source types, their definitions, and their possible uses in research, especially in an American university. Um, so I apologize. I know that there's a really aggressive GIF on the article that's embedded on the slide, so feel free to just scroll past that if you're finding it uh, really obnoxious. But what I did for our scholarly versus popular sources comparison lesson is I had, you know, a slide explaining what popular sources are and then embedded an actual example of a popular source. So I've got the slide with the criteria as well as a real example that students could scroll through and view as we talked about it. So I felt like that was a really great way to keep them on the same screen, keep the content up for them so they didn't have to flip between tabs. Um, so I really liked that. And then we also had a multiple choice question because we had talked about the cycle of information. So this is just a multiple choice asking students to determine where that popular source falls on the cycle of information. So this was a, re a review of content from the previous week. Again, this was something that could have been a draggable slide, but also totally worked as a multiple choice. And then, of course, for comparison purposes, we had the same types of slides for scholarly sources. So again, here we've got the content on our slide. We've got the embedded scholarly source so that we can go back and forth between the two without being lost to the abyss of the internet. And of course, a cycle of information, multiple choice question about scholarly sources. So that is one lesson where I used a Pear Deck last semester. We also have a lesson where we talk about the depth of information and in sources. Um, so to make it a little bit more fun and memorable, uh, we illustrate this with thinking about the depth of the ocean. So how deep into the ocean is the information in this article, uh, illustrating it with, you know, different animals at different levels. And this was a perfect opportunity to use the draggable Pear Deck slide. Now, of course, I'm giving, you know, a really brief overview. This lesson had a ton of introductory information and slides leading up to the actual activity, but just in the interest of time, I wanted to show you the slides for the activity itself. We discussed how different source types include different depths of information. For example, social media posts are often shallower than, say, a journal article. Uh, so this was a draggable activity in which students could move their fish. I thought it was very fun that Pear Deck had a fish that we could use, uh, move it deeper into the ocean for more heavily researched sources or more shallow for popular sources, social media, etc. So we had an example source, we had a fish, we dragged it down. Love to see that people are dragging their fish. Um, and again, we had the same sort of activity with different types of sources. So here we had the Journal of Medical Internet Research, obviously a scholarly article. So hopefully students were then dragging deeper. And it was really nice to be able to pull up the responses, just get a general idea of where everybody was at. You know, if I saw people were in all three levels, it's a sign that during class, I could go back and review that content and make sure that there is no confusion. So nice to see all those fish swimming around. Okay, so the next thing is showing you how do you actually use Pear Deck? How do you create these slides? Um, so the procedure to use Pear Deck is very similar between Google Slides and PowerPoint. I'm going to show you both. So this is a time where I'm going to ask everybody to come back over to the Zoom window because I'm going to be leaving our Pear Deck presentation and going into Google Slides and PowerPoint to actually show you the creation there. Um, so for Google Slides and PowerPoint, Pear Deck functions as an add-on. So like I said, you can just create your presentation and then you just open the add-on and that's what activates Pear Deck in your presentation. So first up, I've got Google Slides here. And so the first thing that you would do when you're using Pear Deck for the first time is you have to go to extensions, add-ons, and get add-ons. So that, and then add a Pear Deck to it. It's pretty easy, um, but I already have Pear Deck here added. So I'll open here. Once you've got it added and open, it brings up this Pear Deck menu, and you can see, you can start your lesson, get some templates, but this is also where you can ask students a question. So this is how you add those interactive pieces into your slideshow. So I've got my question here, what topic are you interested in researching? This is something that I find many students don't feel confident sharing out loud, but are often more likely to write it in a Pear Deck. 
So I want a text response for this slide. So I just click on text. Perry, the cute little pair pops up, tells me he's adding my question. And this indicates to me that now when I run the pair deck, I will have a question response box, a text response specifically for this question. Something that's important to remember for Pear Deck is in order to run the Pear Deck with the interactive elements, you have to click on Start Lesson on this Pear Deck menu. And that's how you open it up, and that's how you ensure that all those interactive elements are working. Same thing over here in PowerPoint, although it's under Insert, Add-ins. So Google Sides, it's Add-ons. PowerPoint, it's Add-ins. And this was, oh, OK. It had been loading a little bit slow. So I, if I had not, Download it before, I would go to store and find Pear Deck, but I've got it here all queued up, adding it in. I don't know why it always makes me log in. Okay, and same sort of thing here. Some of the wording is a little bit different, but I can see my response types and I can see I have the present button. So here I've got it activity where students are evaluating the authority of a source. So I'm going to put in a website, embed it there. It gives you a little bit of information about the question type. You can paste in the URL. It'll show you that it is embedding correctly and can add it to the slide. So same thing when I want to run it, I'm going to click that present with Pear Deck button. I, okay. Um, so back into the Pear Deck window. And again, if I was doing this with students, I wouldn't have them moving around in so many different windows. Um, but hopefully this is helpful in seeing all these different aspects of Pear Deck. Uh, moving into our discussion, I'm going to go through this a little bit quickly just because I know we are running out of time. Um, but Pear Deck is great because it, um, Harvard, it saves your, when you create a, when you create an account, your data and your lessons are tied to that account. So after you run your lessons, you can see your session history, who participated, what they wrote. Um, you know, so if I wanted to review after a lesson and see like were students getting it by the end, I can go back afterwards and see that. You can export lesson data to Google Sheets or Excel. You can also harvest or create um, student takeaways. So that's feedback that you give to students based on what they did. You might have noticed when I clicked the green present button in the Google Slides menu that you can run lessons as self-paced. So instead of having an instructor move through the slides, students move through at their own pace, but still responding in all of those different Pear Deck question types. You can even add audio to those that adds narration. Pear Deck, like I said, also has templates and a content orchard, which is their uh, content library that you can pull from. It also integrates to a bunch of different LMSs, although I know a lot of us at SUNY are moving into Brightspace. I don't believe that Pear Deck integrates seamlessly with Brightspace, but you saw the join procedure even outside of any sort of integration is fairly easy. Um, shortcomings are, of course, the cost of the premium plan. It also requires institutional support to have single sign-on or to have integration with Microsoft or Google. So for instance, at UB, we're currently not allowed to use our school emails with third-party apps. So I can't connect my UB email to Pear Deck. So I just use a Gmail that I created for work to do it. So it's again, it's a workaround. Um, another shortcoming could be that it's difficult to use on mobile for some users. Websites are not always embeddable, including Pear Deck's own websites I discovered yesterday. And then, you know, when we are working with a little bit of a shorter time frame, the time at the beginning of the lessons for students to join, troubleshooting any joining issues can take away a little bit of class time. So just a little overview there of some pros and cons that I see if this is something that you're thinking about. Um, and I know that we're a little bit short on time, but any, any questions at all, um, you can drop them in the chat, unmute. You can also reach out to me afterwards. I'm gonna pop up my contact information quick after this. Ooh, okay. Um, I do, sorry, there's a question in the chat. Do you ever use this with in-person classes? Yes, I absolutely do. Now that we're back in person, I'm using it in person. Like I said, just because it's hard when you've only been given 50 minutes with a group to get them to trust you, to say things out loud, to engage, to give you enough to work with, especially if you're helping out with research topics and things like that. So yes, I'm using it in person now. Um, somebody else asked if you can see who submitted which responses or is it always anonymous? I believe even in the free format, you can require students to sign in with a Google or a 
an office email, but it can be, you know, a little bit depending on how your institution works with single sign on that might not be possible. Um, but for this presentation, I just had everybody sign in anonymously without any account tied to it. Um, you can share the results with the class. You can pull it up and display it um, on their screens. Yes. Um, Molly asks, how's the experience for students with mobile devices versus laptops? The only real difference is that it's smaller. They're looking at it on a phone screen as opposed to on a laptop. So you'll still see it, but it can be quite tiny. So that's why I say there's a little bit of an issue there. Um, so I do just want to quickly pull up this slide with my information. So my email is here. So if we didn't have time for your question, um, please reach out to me via email. If you start using Pear Deck and you run into some sort of problem, please reach out to me if you have another, pro another product like this that you recommend. Um, I'm always open to adding something else to my roster. And then the last thing I want to do is drop this link in the chat. So this is, and it's a crazy link, so sorry. But this is the link that Pear Deck sent me to give you three months of premium if you are interested in starting. If you already have a Pear Deck account, I don't know that this will work. But if you don't have one, if you click this link, it'll prompt you to set it up with either an Office or a Gmail account. And then it will pop on that three months of free premium for you. Um, so if you don't get a chance to do it today, again, shoot me an email. I'll send you the link again. Or for anybody who's watching on the replay, I'm happy to send out that link again. Other than that, thank you so much for your attention and for your participation.